I am a part of all that I have met. Yet all experience is an arch, where through gleams that untraveled world, whose margin fades forever and forever as I move. My brother John and I would like you to meet a very remarkable man, our dad. He's 91 now, and he's an inspiration to everyone who knows him. You gotta laugh a little, cry a little, until the clouds roll by a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. My name is Donald Barrett Mutt. I was born in New Toronto, Ontario on October the 29th, 1927. That was the beginning of the Depression. I was born into a working class family, so I learned the value of money and to avoid getting into debt. It was a small industrial town in the western suburbs of the city, with all the advantages of small town life and easy access to the city by streetcar. My mother was Celia, and she was the disciplinarian in the family, although she was very proud of all my accomplishments. My gentle father, Percy, loved his garden and he loved to fish, so he would take me with him to fishing and supported me <coughs> in some of the activities that my mother thought were a little too dangerous, such as riding a bicycle <coughs> playing football in high school. There was a really nice sandy beach at the foot of our street and that's where I learned to swim and where my father put his canoe in the lake to take me and my mother for rides along the lake shore. When I was 11 or 12 years of age a chap came around door to door promoting music lessons on the Spanish and Hawaiian guitar. My mother let him in and he sat me down with the, with the guitar and soon had me playing some simple melodies. One of these was Jesus Loves Me and that sold my mother. She, uh, she loved it. So she signed me up for a year's lessons once a week at a dollar a lesson and if I stuck it out for the whole year, I could keep the guitar. So I did. I enjoyed it and signed up for a second year. I used to take my guitar when we went to visit my grandparents in Bloomingville, and I would play hymns for my grandmother. The rest of the family had to suffer through the performance, but my grandmother just loved it. First job was on Friday evenings and Saturdays at the local blah blah grocery store in the meat department. I was responsible for cutting up the cooked meat and getting it ready for display in the shelves. An older chap, uh, much more experienced, uh, was my boss and uh, he was very blunt with customers at times. One day a lady was not very satisfied with the uh, product that he was displaying and uh, she kept complaining and he said, finally got fed up and said to her, lady, go away. He said, shit gathers flies. And the lady went off and off. There were three organizations that played an important role in Dad's development during his teenage years. One of them was the young people's group at our United Church. And we had many activities together, parties, dances, hikes, and I have had friends which I maintain for the rest of my life. Another was the Boy Scouts, uh, in which I was part of the bugle band and we went with the Goodyear veterans uh, and marched with them uh, to Remembrance Day parades in the fall. The third was a tennis club and that was all connected also with the church but we had a much broader membership 
and we played against other teams in the area. And uh, again, from that, I have many friends that have lasted all my life. But the most important thing was that I met my future wife, Helen Marischek. In the fall of 1940, shortly after the war had begun, Dad was almost 13 and starting high school. He was too young to join the armed forces. In fact, he graduated from high school just when the war ended. Dad was an exceptional student and usually stood first in his class. He served as editor-in-chief of The Peptimist, the Mimico High School yearbook, and upon graduation had the honor of being valedictorian in 1945. Prompted by his high school teacher, he decided to study chemical engineering at U of T and received more scholarships and awards than he was allowed to accept. Okay, I decided to study chemical engineering, but because of my parents' limited financial ability, I was not able to go to a university in another city and therefore went to the University of Toronto. With all the veterans coming back and going back to school, uh, there was a much larger class than could be handled on the main campus in Toronto. So they created a temporary campus in Ajax, some 30 miles east of Toronto. And I spent the first two years of my undergraduate uh, studies in Ajax. I got home occasionally on weekends when my father or my roommate's father would drive us. After the, for the third and fourth years, we were back on the main campus and I was able to live at home and travel back and forth to university on, by a streetcar. I decided to continue my studies, graduate studies, and to obtain a PhD in chemical engineering. Dad's research in cellulose chemistry caught the attention of scientists in the pulp and paper industry, and he was offered a job in Hawkesbury, Ontario, with the research lab of Canadian International Paper Company. The research was a unique place to work. At our peak, we had a staff of 250 people. We had chemists and engineers from all over the world, Europe, Scandinavia, India, Japan. And we served as the corporate research center for both the Canadian company and its parent company in the United States, International Paper. But in addition to the interesting and challenging work we did, we also had a lot of fun. Whenever anyone got married or left, we would have a party at the local golf club, the Abenaki Golf Club. Among our group, there were people who were musicians, singers, actors, and we would put on skits to make fun of the people who were leaving or getting married or of management in general. Many of the people who worked at the research and the mill lived in houses built by the company to rent to their employees at a very low rate in an area called the Annex. It was a very safe environment and everyone knew everyone else. And we would build a skating rink for the children to use during the winter and we would have a fireworks and vacant lots on Canada Day and uh, other major holidays. I had the unique experience of being able to walk home from my office in less than 10 minutes. So I always went home for lunch, checked the mail, and then was able to get home shortly after 5 o'clock when work finished to be able to sit down with my family and watch Get Smart on television. I was fortunate enough to have many opportunities to travel on business, and occasionally Helen was able to accompany me. 
for example, I had a conference in Helsinki and we took a side trip to Leningrad in Russia and then toured through the Scandinavian countries. Some of the highlights of other tours that we did on our holidays together would include Yugoslavia, um, the U.S. Southwest with the Grand Canyon and Bryce and Zion National Parks, and the Canadian North, including Dawson City, Inuvik, Tuk Tuk, and Yellowknife. What great memories we had. Hawkesbury was an excellent place to raise a family. It was a small town located on the Ottawa River with a predominantly French-speaking population. And I think the exposure to a different culture enriched our lives. Helen and I were married in 1953 and subsequently two wonderful children. John was a little shy, Judy the more adventurous one. Helen was a very good mother, sometimes strict, but always loving. We lived in our house on Thorn Street for 45 years, but unfortunately, Helen developed knee problems and the stairs in our split-level house were too stressful for her. So we sold that house and bought a bungalow in the on Stephen Street. It was her dream home, but unfortunately she only had two years to enjoy it before she had a massive stroke which left her paralyzed on her right side and unable to speak. The long day wanes, the slow moon climbs, the deep bones round with many voices. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order, smite the sounding furrows. For my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. I was able to get Helen a room at the local nursing home, Prescott Russell Residence, which is only a five minute drive from where our new home. She was well taken care of although speech therapy was unsuccessful, but she had an excellent massage therapist, Sibyl, who did exercises with her and drawing, and they had a lot of fun together. Most days I went in to visit Helen four times to help her at meal times and in the evening to play music or to put on her favorite television programs. John and Judy visited her frequently, and she was particularly happy when Jude's dog, Mickey, came. He would climb up in the bed at times, and he would always be looking for treats from her food. Helen was the love of my life, the wind beneath my wings. I was always did well in school, and people often commented that I was very smart. But the smartest thing I ever did was to marry Helen. She was Ukrainian and introduced me to classical music, ballet, and opera, and to the food and culture of the Ukraine. Ah, in fact, I still make pierogies at home. <clears throat> I once heard a lady interviewed about grief. She had lost her son in Afghanistan. <clears throat> and the interviewer commented that time heals, doesn't it? And she replied, I don't believe that. But I feel that what you do with your time can help you to cope. So I try to keep myself busy in various ways. Helen died in 2008 after a valiant three-year struggle. And in those three years, Dad taught us more about true love and devotion. Ten years after losing the love of his life, Dad's facing challenges of his own. His prostate cancer has metastasized, he's had a few nasty falls, and he's getting a little weaker and slowing down every day. 
Well, I cope by doing what I can, and I hope to keep doing it until I die. I can't play golf anymore, I can't go for long walks, and I can't travel any distance. So I just hope to keep going, doing what I can do for as long as I can, and just be thankful for the wonderful life I've had with all the love and support of people that my family and my friends have given me. I followed the advice of a lady who lost her son and kept myself very busy. I volunteered at the nursing home and read to a chap who was going blind while visiting other friends. I attended concerts in Hawkesbury, Vancouver Hill, and went to theater and opera in Hudson. And I kept my mind busy reading, publishing my memoirs, <coughs> and <coughs> watching videos from the teaching company on a variety of subjects, including science, history, art, and music. Last December, Dad had a few falls and spent a week in the hospital. He hoped he would bounce back to doing most things for himself, but that didn't happen. He was weak and needed more help. We hired a personal support worker, Wendy Barron, who comes to me six days a week for a total of 20 to 25 hours each week. She gives me the best shower I've ever had, does the laundry, changes the bedding, does the grocery shopping, helps me get dressed, prepares most of my meals, goes for walks with me, and does exercises with me, and other household Most men who suddenly find themselves alone at 80 years of age would simply open a can of soup or have frozen meals for dinner. Not our dad. I follow a sensible diet, mainly low fat, and I avoid commercial products with a high salt content. Until recently I've done most of my own cooking and baking which I consider just another form of chemistry. Some of my favorite dishes include <coughs> pasta, uh, pierogies, hummus, soups, and of course lemon squares. And I'm renowned in the area for the quality of my lemon squares. <laughs> Uh, I love all kinds of music, classical, jazz, uh, folk, country, and uh, I have, uh, when I was 11 or 12, I took lessons on the Hawaiian guitar and still play it to this day. One year I took uh, an instrumental music course at the high school. And over the period of maybe three years, I learned to play to a limited degree the trumpet, the um, clarinet, the French horn, and the, the tuba, and the uh, it's like a trombone, but it's, uh, I forget the name of it now. <laughs> now, I don't really think I'm a religious man. I don't believe there is a supernatural being somewhere up above the clouds that can intervene in the affairs of this world. I go to church mainly for the social aspect and because I like to sing and the singing hymns is one of the few opportunities I have to, to sing. 
And you know, once in a while a minister will give us a thought-provoking and challenging sermon. But I really think that God is love. When I look back on my life, I, I feel that I've had a charmed life. I was very fortunate to have interesting and challenging work to do. I had a beautiful and loving wife and two wonderful children who provided me with uh, six grandchildren, four was John and two was Jude. And I also have now a great grandson with another great-grandchild apparently on the way. If I were to give my grandchildren and great-grandchildren any advice on how to live their lives, it would be work hard, be honest, and be kind to everyone you meet. And in my opinion, love is everything. Um, I know that the uh, journey is coming towards a close, and I just hope that in the end it will be swift and without pain. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. And then a couple of love songs. Every time we say goodbye, I'll die, 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 die for die. the train. Every time it's fate, say goodbye, I'll die, I'll die, I'll die, I'll die, 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 I wonder why the thing is alone. Just before it rains, it took us all the way to the end of I saw a little kind of funky saw on Christmas at the Jersey and Bloody Lounge. I went back to Sandy Lowe and sit inside the very such a day of spring. With the white shoes, they slide and cut your locks up where I began to sing. With the new sides, you know it's fine. And I was on fire and Christmas for some strange reason to change. Is coming. He 
Honey glass from the in ground recorder. We believe. When Judy and Maria you know, were teenagers, the on they the were enamored of Chris Christopherson. And, the and then they were the flowers go on. The first was to see the Pacific Coulter, where I would have missed the Chris Christopherson. And now, he's one of my favorite songwriters. So I'd like to do a couple of his songs. So I used to have his girls. And Bobby McGee should never give a license to a man who drives a sleigh. Such thing as Santa, where as for me and Grandpa, girls we gone. believe. Long time passing, where have all the young girls gone? Long time ago, where have all the young girls gone? Taken husbands, everyone. When will they ever learn? When? Where have all the young men gone a long time ago? Where have all the young men gone? Gone for soldiers, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the soldiers gone? Where have all the soldiers gone long time ago? Where have all the soldiers gone? Gone to graveyards, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the graveyards gone? Long time passing, where have all the graveyards gone? Long time ago, where have all the graveyards gone? Covered with flowers, everyone, when will...